Hello and welcome to this communion time. It's good to have you joining me. Thanks for thanks for being here. And um, it's good to share together the gift of communion. Christmas is a time when we often talk about gifts. And when we come before the communion table, although for some people it seems slightly odd to be talking about Jesus's death at the time of year when we celebrate his birth. Actually, at the communion table, we are reminded that whatever gifts we might give or receive this Christmas, Communion is a time when we receive the most precious, the most valuable and what was for God the most costly gift that could ever be given. Before we share the elements together, I just want to read from John chapter 13 verse 1. Now, John's gospel is often regarded as probably the most scholarly theological gospel out of the four. Some people disagree with that statement. But um, what's interesting is that out of the 21 chapters that John wrote to record the life and times of Jesus, he used five of those chapters to focus on what happened at the Last Supper when Jesus gave communion, the gift of communion to his disciples. John says this at the start of chapter 13. It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. So John thought that the communion, that the, what, happened, what happened that night that he records in those five chapters of his gospel was Jesus showing his disciples the full extent of his love. And what's great is that we can take part in this as well. It doesn't matter that we weren't around 2000 years ago to to sit in that upper room amongst the disciples to see what was going on because we can read about it because John recorded it in great detail. And what's great as well is that, yes, the bread does represent the body that was given for us. It, the wine does represent the blood that was spilt for us. But Jesus died on that cross, but that wasn't the end. Because he rose again and through his Holy Spirit, he's living and present with us right now as we share in this gift. And as we receive these elements that we're about to share together. So we receive afresh the Holy Spirit in our hearts, the very spirit of Jesus, the spirit that John recalls Jesus promising to send to his disciples, to counsel us, to protect us, to guide us and to love us all the way through our lives if we choose to follow him. So on that note, I'm going to lead us in prayer. And If at the end of this prayer, you'd like to press pause and pray your own prayer of confession, whatever that might be, or pray for others. Or pray however you feel led to prepare yourself for communion, then please feel free to do so. But first of all, I'm going to pray for a blessing on these elements and I'm going to ask God to prepare us to receive them and to receive him. Let's pray. Father God, I want to thank you for what we are about to receive. Because, Lord, when we read the words of John, we know that we're about to receive the full extent of your love. We're about to receive the representation of the body and the blood of your son, your only son, who you sent in the world to reconcile us to you. Father, we thank you that that you're a God who loves us. You're a God who made us. You're a God who has plans for us. And you're a God who never abandons us. Father, we read back through your word and we, we see the whole story of your people. We see Israel and Judah and all, all that they went through. And we see their faith being rewarded, Lord. We see they had their highs and their lows, but ultimately they never stopped believing that one day you would send a saviour into the world, a messiah. 
And Father, we thank you that in Jesus, we recognise the fulfilment of that promise. In his life, in his death and in his resurrection, we are reconciled to you. So Heavenly Father, we pray for your blessing now on the bread and the wine that we are about to receive. Father, we recognise that these are simply representations, but that doesn't take away from the power of what they represent. Father, we know that these represent the sacrifice of Jesus the perfect sacrifice. And so, Father, we confess to you all those things that we've said or done or thought which make us unworthy of receiving these elements. Father, we acknowledge that we are fallen people, but we also acknowledge, Lord, that we are your people and that through you, There is nothing that we can say or do or think that can ever sever the bond between you and us. And so, Father, we thank you for the gift of communion and we pray for your blessing on us as we receive it now together. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so, when we come to the communion table, at the moment we have to serve ourselves, but normally we serve one another as a fellowship, as a, as a brother and sisterhood of God's people. That can't happen at the moment. But as I said in the prayer, that does in no way take away from the power of communion. It's important and it's obedient that we do what Jesus asked us to do, that we do this in remembrance of him. And so we remember the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread before his disciples and broke it, saying this is my body given for you. And so please take your bread, eat it and give thanks. At the end of John chapter 17, just before Jesus goes off to the Garden of Gethsemane, where we see him praying and then eventually being arrested, we see a glimpse of what motivated Jesus. It was the the full extent of his love as John saw it, but in Jesus' prayer, in verse 17, in chapter 17, In verse 24, Jesus says, Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. So what Jesus is saying there is that he knows, he knows full well that he's about to, he's about to go to the cross. He knows he's about to die. And although he knew that it wasn't the end, his motivation for going to the cross, his motivation for suffering that pain, for suffering the horror of crucifixion, was that I want those you have given me to be with me where I am. He knew that everyone that he had loved, everyone that he had seen on earth throughout his life, 
if he ascended back into heaven, they were all polluted by sin as we are. And so Jesus's motivation for going to the cross was love because he wanted every single one of us to have the opportunity to be reconciled to God and therefore to be able to follow Jesus where he was going when he ascended back into heaven. Jesus's motivation for the crucifixion was love for you and for me. And there is no gift in the world that is greater than that. As Jesus poured the wine, he said, this is my blood poured out for you. There is a portion awaiting the mouth of each and every person who chooses to receive it. And so if you know Jesus, if you accept him as your saviour, then take the cup and drink with a heart full of gratitude. <clears throat> so thank you for joining me for communion today. I'm going to close in prayer and part of my prayer is that wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whatever this week brings you, you will know that you face each and every day in the presence of Jesus. Let's pray. No man hath greater love than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Father God, we thank you for the gift of communion. We thank you for this time that we've shared together. And Father, we thank you that communion is not simply a way of remembering something that happened a couple of thousand years ago and has no bearing on today, but instead, it's a way of remembering that what was, what was started that night is still going on now. That Jesus' desire to see people come to, come to him, to join him where he is now, to take up residency in the room in his father's house. Father, we thank you for the love of your son. We thank you, Lord, that, that you love us in the same way. And we thank you, Father, that through this communion, our relationship with you is secure. Lord, we love you. We acknowledge you as our God. And we thank you for your presence with us always. Bless us now, Lord, as we go about our day, as we go about our week, and help us to do your work every day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>